In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good people, I'm thanking God for so many reasons. One is because we are coming to the end of the novena. But the second one, which is the best, is that uh, we decided to get out of the room of torment. And somebody asked me, Father, when we get out of the room of torment, where do we go? Now, today, today I'm presenting to you the next room that we enter. It is called the room of blessings. And this is the room where we will be from Tuesday morning after the closure mass. In this room, there is joy. Now, look at that room. Eh? Again, the same room has uh, the 12 doors. And again, it has the four feeding doors. And I'm loving this. Let me take you through the 12 doors and maybe mention something about the 12 doors and then uh, we'll be able to, to get into the feeding doors. But again, look at the blue part. The blue part is where you are. And this is what should explain your being. In this room of blessing, focus on loving God, walking with Jesus, the Holy Spirit's guidance, peace, joy and healing, obedience, pure life, fruitful for God's kingdom, spiritual victory, and giving God the glory. That is the person who is out of the cage. The person in the cage is hurting. The person in the cage is paining. The person in the cage is complaining. The person in the cage is complaining, uh, is lamenting. The person in the cage is whining and pining. But the person out of the cage in the room of blessings, in the room of blessings, we are covered by the glory of God. I love this. Door number one, God's presence. In God's presence, we worship in truth and in freedom. Door number two, visions. This is where we get God's vision and messages. In fact, it's about getting God's wisdom. Number three, God's voice. It comes about through silent prayer and spiritual direction. We get God's, God's voice. Hope you remember early. Number four, dreams. Remember what I told you, that dreams are God's letter to us. In the dreams, we get spiritual insights. We get God's guidance. And also God wants us. This is important. Number four, no, number five is testimonies. Testimonies. Testimonies is in number five. Sharing God's love. Sharing God's healing stories. I have been hearing so many testimonies. And I want to hear so many testimonies after the closure mass. Inside the cage we have no testimonies. We can only lament. But we will be sharing God's healing stories after this novena is closed. And this is my prayer and my hope. The door number six is healing from grief and loss. Healing from loneliness and the joy of walking with Jesus. There is joy in walking with Jesus. There is tranquility in walking with Jesus. There is deep peace. Inner peace and inner freedom. 
when we walk with Jesus. The aura is godly. The aura is heavenly. We just need that. There is no confusion. There are no threatening voices. There are no choking, choking, choking. Nothing like that. It doesn't come. When we walk with Jesus, we walk in freedom. When we walk with Jesus, we walk in faith. When we walk with Jesus, we walk in trust. When we walk with Jesus, we walk in patience. When we walk with Jesus, we walk with abandonment. When we walk with Jesus, we walk with detachment. Nothing as sweet as a walk with Jesus. Nothing. The other door is pure life. This is pure thoughts, word actions that pleases God. Whatever we do, we do that which pleases God. We don't sabotage each other. We don't malign the names of each other. Remember, we are free beings. We are enjoying a certain level of presence. Our life is pure. Our life is not tormented. We are celebrating because finally, finally, finally we are set free. Praise be to God, we are free. We have been set free. And then we can contemplate on repentance and forgiveness. Repentance and forgiveness. That's the next door. Forgiving everyone, including yourself. You can't be telling us that I'll never forgive my husband. I'll never forgive my wife. You will have to. Otherwise, you live in the next room forever. In the room of torment. Can you imagine how beautiful it would be? The husband and a wife in the same room of blessings. Can you imagine? Would you ever fight? No. Would you ever sabotage each other? No. Would you ever even plan to kill each other? No. But remember, everything is possible. When one soul is in the room of blessings and the other one is in the room of torment. So you can imagine how difficult it can be to be in the same room, under the same roof, under the same blanket, on the same door with somebody who does not share the room with you. One in torment, the other one in blessings. And now this explains if you didn't know why some of you married people are sleeping in different rooms. The wife is in the visitor's room or where the children sleeps and the husband is in his own room. Have you ever had situations where the husband enters the bedroom and locks? He locks out the wife. That is telling you he is making a spiritual statement that my dear, we are not in the same room. The way I have seen you happy, you must be in the room of blessings. Let me enjoy my misery in the room of torment. The room of torment is perpetually locked. That is why your spouse enters into the room and locks. If you didn't know where your husband locked you out, now you know. If you didn't know where your wife locked you out, now you know. We have had situations where the husband comes, the home is closed, the wife talks um, with him from the widow. Your wife is telling you, my husband, you are a free spirit. You belong to the room of blessings. I am tormenting here. Please don't come. If you come, help me to get out of here. And maybe you as a husband, when your wife is telling you, my dear, I'm tormented, I'm feeling lost and pained, your work is to harass her, to beat her, 
and to malign her name, saying that she is disrespectful, she is that. Your wife is not disrespectful. Your wife is not a terrorist. Your wife is a sick soul. Participate in her healing. Your husband is a sick soul. It is only a sick husband who enters the bedroom and locks the wife out. The same room they sired their children. Something is wrong. Wrong. It is wrong. And this is why this novena, its greatest objective is to make sure that husband and wife are both in the room of blessings. They will grow each other spiritually, economically, socially, and familiarly. Spiritual wisdom is number nine. Discernment, faith, knowledge, and humility. Here when we pray, we pray for discernment. Our faith is strong. We are humble. We know when to speak and when not to. Number 10, serving Jesus in trust, joy, and contentment. Number 11, spiritual victory. Victory from fear. Victory from worries. Victory from spiritual attacks. Victory from destruction. I am always so happy when I guide families and individuals on how to fight those attacks. In the room of blessings, you never hear objects being thrown on your, on your, on your roof. In the room of blessings, nobody can come to choke you. In the room of blessings, you are a free soul. Your hand is being held by God. There is a song I love most. The title is, I Know Who Holds My Hand. I Know Who Holds My Hand. Finally, number 12, loving God, loving God, loving people, loving everything, loving everything that is godly. This love is genuine and true. And this is the best that happens because when we approach God, we approach God as men and women who can only love as God loves. And how I would pray that all of us are in this realm that we can stand, we can stand and glorify God because in the room of blessings, we can only be happy. In the room of blessings, we can always be a blessing to others. When we sleep, we contemplate blessings. When we are awake, we contemplate blessings. When we go for worship, we contemplate blessings. When we are serving God, we do that with a backdrop of blessings, freedom, inner joy, inner happiness, and the best of all our hands being held by the ancient of days. Allow me to stop there. I'll finish on this on Monday as we prepare for the closure mass. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Remember, tomorrow we, uh, Sundays we do not have devotions. And we are doing this purposely on Monday as we prepare ourselves for the closure mass later at night. Tomorrow, join me at 8 a.m. East African time for the first Sunday of Advent. Thank you.